We are here with one and only Lillian Garcia. Hi, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much. Women's wrestling fans have submitted their favorite moments with Lillian Garcia. Woo! And there's so many. Oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> many. So I have to pick just top five. So number one. Oh my God. My evening gown match. Whoa. Oh, look at Howard. Howard blocked the right hand. Whoa. Can't believe I said that. And Trish Stratus was my partner, uh, or she was in my corner, I should say, and I had to go against Howard Finkel. You know, this is my one and only match that I ever had. And, oh. and I won. <laughs> yes, so you I did. I am undefeated. I am 1-0, baby. <laughs> What's your memory kind of going through this passing the torch moment from Howard Finkel to become the voice of WWE? You know, Howard was such a sport for all of this to happen. It was so great. He was really like, you know what? It is time for me. It's fine. You know, and he was so helpful. I've always thanked Howard Finkel because he could have been completely opposite to that. Someone coming in and replacing you, he could have been very bitter. He could have tried to sabotage me. And instead, he was so helpful all the way. So I love Howard. What was great about this moment was that your bestie, Trish Stratus, the Hall of Famer, has been on your side the whole time. The whole time. Now she's returning for Evolution. What's your thought on that? I love it. I think it's just spectacular that so many years later, she could still be relevant and not just be relevant. Like people are looking forward to seeing her and it's, it's awesome. You just made me realize that here we were, us three women ganging up on him. It was kind of like women's revolution, evolution right there. It started right here. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's jump to number two. Some private interaction. Some Of course, that's your iconic entrance with Tori Wilson. Wilson. Oh, man. When they told me that I was going to be singing her entrance theme song, I was so excited. I didn't know at first when they said, look, we'd like for you to actually do one of the wrestlers' songs, entrance theme. I was like, this is phenomenal. Who? And they're like, we don't know yet. And then they developed the music. They developed the song. And then they're like, all right, this is who we'd like to pitch it to. They showed it to Tori, and Tori immediately was like, I love it. I love it. And then we pitched this idea of actually me, you know, singing it live and getting her to the ring kind of deal. And, and it was so funny. We laugh about that now, about the whole silhouette thing. We thought we were so cool. It was so hot. Well, how did you come up with that dance? Well, we just literally that afternoon, we were like, okay, how does this look if we do this? And what about that? Now we laugh at it and we're like, are you kidding me? We thought it was like the best thing ever. But you know, it was fun. If you can do entrance for current crop up women's wrestlers, who would it be? Okay, so Ronda Rousey just came to mind. I mean, I feel like it would just be a badass song with a lot of attitude and I would love to get my teeth into that. That would be amazing. Ronda, call her. <laughs> All right, number three is... Excuse me, but... This is how it's done. Hey, hey, sister! Oh my lord. Jillian had so many moments, and of course, her singing voice. Woo, who can forget the singing voice? No, you know what? The thing with her, it's so funny because people actually started messing up my name after she came in. They were calling me Jillian. Lillian and Jillian sitting in a tree. <laughs> she was just so much fun to talk to and to work with and she just recently actually reached out to me literally about two weeks ago telling me how she's been listening to Chasing Glory to my podcast and how she's like wow the way you're connecting with everybody and and what's coming out of the uh the podcast she was I, I was I was very touched that she reached out. I want to know about Jillian's story for sure. You know, it made me think about when she reached out. I actually am going to start doing that once a month. I'm going to do a where are they now? And so I'm going to definitely interview somebody from the past and find out what they're up to now. In current roster of women, there are a couple women that can sing, like Naomi and Mickey James. Yeah. Is there anyone that you want to collab with? You know, it's so funny. People have actually been talking about Mickey James and I doing something. Naomi and I were talking for a while about doing something and it's just, the schedule is so crazy that we can never find time to sit with a producer and, and write a song and be at the same place at the same time. But I never say never. Like, you never know. Number four. So this moment, we had so many juicy good moments where I had to like cluster it into one moment. Someone called it Lillian getting dragged. <gasps> Is you. <laughs> oh my God! 
Wrong place, wrong time. First of all, Stephanie throwing the coffee, and then, oh! There's a keeper! There's a keeper! Oh, just coming up! Oh, oh, oh. Wait, 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 hey! What in the world? Oh, hey! Wait a minute! Oh, Russ, no competitor! Yeah, remembering Victoria. Oh my God, picking me up. See, there's certain things that I forget about. Hey, that's Lillian. Look at Lillian taking it What the heck? And the feathers are flying. I forgot that I even picked up a pillow and got involved. That is crazy. Oh, in this one. <laughs> Whoa, she did it. The infamous kiss. I love Christy. She's so cool. Hey, hey, come on. And I think somebody came in, I think it was Candace that came in and saved me on that. Again, there's a lot of times that I forgot about it, but it was just always so fun to be involved in a way that people were not expecting. Is there one moment that really stucks out to you when it comes to you being physical? At the time, he was Jamal. So Umaga, remember? Like three minute warning, when they both picked me up like a rag doll, like a, yeah, and tossed me. To the, the moving vehicle! That definitely was something I was like, wow, that was intense. But they took good care of me. The last moment. Sometime when you were 15 years old, you were hospitalized. And that broke my heart because it wasn't about that. You hosting Chasing Glory. I'm telling you, there's no show like Chasing Glory. The way they look into the person behind superstars, it's really special. What does Chasing Glory mean to you? Wow, thank you for saying that. You know, when I stepped away from WWE and I'll never forget, my dad, he was really sick, but he told me before he passed away, he's like, please Lillian, I, I want you to do something that, you know, after WWE, I just, please don't sit here and watch me dying. I spoke to a producer and I said, you know, I've always wanted to do this show where people really get to know the lives of these superstars because for the longest time, there was such a stigma with wrestlers, meatheads or this and that. And I said, no, these are amazing people, amazing human beings with incredible stories. So once I started doing that and really getting the, the they just, luckily they feel connected to me and feel like they can open up. Once we started getting some of those stories, I was like, wow, this has taken on a life of its own. Hearing people's chase for glory, wow, it's been so powerful. So to me, it's meant everything. So this week, Chasing Glory has been all over the news because of Paige. So I think a lot of people are saying that Paige was blaming Riot Squad for the concussion. What's your thought on that? Well, I think that it got taken out of context because here, you gotta understand, Paige is very, very sensitive to injuries, very. Her entire career has been completely finished because of an injury. So when she said, take care of yourself, of course she's coming from, come on guys, don't let this happen because you can end up like me. So I could hear the passion in her voice and I, I know that her thing wasn't like, how dare you guys, or how, none at all. I think it totally got taken out of context. I feel like that match has become bigger than just a match. We're having a conversation about how people can take care of each other if things don't go the way you think they're gonna go, right? There's so many learning lessons in that match and I love, you know, Steve Austin and I, I was on his show just this past week and we were dissecting it and talking about it and it really actually, he put in such great perspective what everybody's point of view and what they could have done and, and what's learned from it. And that's the bottom line. I think that people getting on page was a little bit, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. And I, I definitely, I don't blame Riot Squad. She's not blaming Riot Squad. She's just saying, man, guys, like be careful, right? Because you can end up like me. Thank you so much, Leon Garcia. Is there one thing you want to tell your fans? I just want to say thank you so much because Stepping away from the WWE was so hard, so hard. I cried my eyes out. I'm going to miss you so much, but I have to tell you that my heart will always be right here in this ring, right here for you. This has kept me connected to all the fans and the fact that everybody has re reacted to Chase and Glory like they have, it's just been so powerful. And I just wanna thank you guys and continue to stay on this journey with me because I'm on my own Chase for Glory, right? I'm on my own journey, so it's great to have bring everybody with me.